Saturday was all about three of the most important words in Scottish football, and that was penalty to Rangers. But Sunday was about the other four most important words in Scottish football. The Rangers are coming. And why are Rangers coming? Because Celtic are shite. Brendan Rodgers are shite. And they fell apart for the second time this season at Rugby Park. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Football. It's time for your SPFL review show. Now, we all know what everybody wants to talk about. We all want to talk about how pish Celtic are. So what we're going to do in order to get to that as quickly as possible, we're going to talk as fast as possible over the pish leagues in Scotland. So that would be League 2, League 1, the Championship, and then Celtic minus the 11 teams in the Premier League. So oh let's get into it. Kicking off League 2, I think it was a full card. I know there was some, uh, was. There was some yellow signal warnings with the weather and shit, but uh, the only warning I, want, I care about is the one at Rugby Park, the big red flag I warning. Don't, I, I don't recall one game being postponed, so anyway, draw, Peter Head, Bonnie of the Grows, Clyde finally picking up a point here, so I think I predict that a draw for them, Stranra, the boys in Stranra. Uh, Stanhouse Moore beat them bottom, uh, East 5 4 0, and the Spartans be 4 4 Athletic. Which no, it's league... mad, I actually think if Livingston were in League 2, their tendencies would be similar. Yeah, probably would be, but Clyde! Inch closer to Elgin City and 4 4. I still think they're going down, I haven't seen enough big Clyde to to get out of this trouble that they find themselves in. I think I would change it up. I don't know if I just like one team going down. Yeah. I think it would be... I think even having three go down. You can make the 10th team... Or you can make 10 and 9th automatically go down. And then maybe whoever finishes 8th, they have a playoff against the, the second place in the Highland and the second place in the Lowland League. I think it's incredibly unfair that the Highland and Lowland league teams need to jump through fucking hoops for yeah, like I, 10 years I think the winner of each of those leagues should get automatically promoted so I would have I would have two automatic promotions uh, 9th and 10th in league 2 definitely go down whoever wins the Highland League and the Lowland League definitely go up and then I would have whoever finishes second in both the Highland League and the Lowland League play each other with the winner of that playing the 8th place team in league 2 I think that would be a fairer system I get it there's only 10 teams in league 2 Maybe they don't want to like shake it up too much. Maybe they think that would be uh, a bit excessive with the fact that you could be getting possibly half the league changing from season to season if you've got five, to three teams coming up and two teams coming down. But for me, it, it would. I think it would improve. It, it would keep that's things. That's the point of football. I think it would though. keep things fresh. Change. And I think that's something that's held back Scottish football for a long time. I think since we've seen the the addition of the promotion to the pyramid. We have seen teams come up for the Highland and Lowland League and all of a sudden we've got teams are now in League One and they're, they're doing pretty well for themselves and that would never have been the case. And we've seen teams that have just never had any ambition finally go down. Uh, teams like Albion Rovers and East Stirlingshire. So, nah, for me it's good. Uh, I also think if we got more teams into the Premier League and we freshened that up, it would be a bit better. I know there's always talks about extending it to 18 teams and all that stuff. So, nah, for, I think for me change is better and if we could get more teams into the pyramid and get rid of the teams that are just hanging on there by a thread then what I, if the leagues in Europe play each other four times a season top ones none you won't find a top league that, and I'm not I'm not necessarily saying you can't become a top league if you're playing each other four times a season but I can't think of a, a league that is in the top 10 of UEFA that does that no, I can't off the top of my head but uh, even teams like the Turkish league the like Austrian league I believe they all have like 16 or 18 teams in it. And, and they. Even I the Bundesliga. The Swiss League's got 10 teams in it. Mm, I'm not quite sure about the Swiss League. I know the Bundesliga has 18 and they play less games. I think we I think we need to do something with Scottish football. But at the moment, the teams just don't want to give it up. I think Celtic Rangers enjoy four old firm games and then the rest of the teams would be financially worse off, I think, if they're playing the old firm less. So. That's a video for a different day. I would rather it though, but yeah, let's we want to get to Celtic here, so let's just. Right, not... There's the league table, right? Stenhouse Muir open up a gap. Clyde close it. There's just a bunch of diddy teams. Stenhouse Muir have the same gap over Peterhead as Celtic do over Rangers. Only difference is it's uh, Peterhead that have played one game. Oh, it's like the same difference. Ah, yeah, because Rangers. Uh, what are you on about? I don't know. Anyway, Al Athletic nil, Hamilton nil, and Athletic one. Cove Rangers free. Did I just say Annan twice? I don't give a damn. Look at that. Red cards. Red card city. Uh, Stone Albion beating Embra City. Falkirk beating Kelly Hearts. And Montrose getting pumped by Queen of the Sun. Good win for uh, Martin Barley. I think he needed this. 
Big he, Marv. He did. Uh, and I tell you what, it's, it's tied at the top, Falk, with a wee game in hand there. It's tied at the bottom as well between Annan and Edinburgh City. Yes, it, it is indeed. Let's move on to the Championship. <laughs> Woohoo! Ah, oh, if I did a bet, I'd have been beat. Airdrionians 1, Dunfermline 2. Big win for Dunfermline. Arbroath 1, Greenock Morton 2. This could be what an important win that could be for Greenock Morton. Do you fear for our growth now with Dick Campbell gone? Do you think they could actually yes. end up going down? Um, I think that's the case as well. Dundee United coming away with a 1 0 win over air, pretty close, but uh, three points nonetheless. Queen's Park 1, Inverness, Caledonian, Thistle. I did say this last time, I think last week in the review show. I think Inverness, Caledonian, Thistle have, in the space of like a month, six weeks, went for a team that looked like they'd be lucky to survive relegation. The team that can now push on and, and try and find a, a playoff spot. Yes, and it's the first time Duncan Ferguson's been sent off this season. Thoughts on that? I'm assuming that's him here. Yes. 37 uh, and 46. And he gets sent off. Showing dissent towards the referee. I'm surprised he took this long. Brave Rovers 4, Partick Thistle 3, though. Anything to say about that? I, I was going to review that game on Friday night and I forgot to. Anyway, the Dundee United are coming, they're here, they're there, but so are Rafe Rovers, they're still up there, Rafe Rovers hanging on, 33 points. I'd like Rafe Rovers in the Premiership, I have no love for Dundee United. Gordon DL's former team, ah, yep. I'd take them both. Big, big, big uh, Daza. I'd take them both. Nah, I'd rather someone else, I don't like Dundee United, fuck them. Ah, big team though, no? I will. The new firm Derby? They, they fought it the wrong way, didn't they? I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> a no, <laughs> fuck off. They all fought it the new, they all fought it the the wrong way. Ah, no, but they're, they're the... What do you want me to do? What a brand new team stay in the league? Did they do that 94? <laughs> anyway, let's move on to the... Let, I, don't let's talk, let's, I don't know if Celtic got a foot. Let's talk about fucking Nuko. They got fucking did. pumped by Mon the Kelly. Pacific Fuck Shelf all, 1, Kilmarnock 2. Oh no, that's us out of Europe. Well, oh no, that's the Rangers coming. That's the Rangers right on our doorstep. Uh, Matt O'Reilly gave Celtic the lead. Second half, though, Kilmarnock turned it around and... Uh, Daniel Armstrong, great performance for him. Uh, he was pivotal in Kilmarnock winning this game. Nathaniel Phillips scored an own goal. His name may say Daniel Armstrong, but who calls him fucking? It's Danny. It's Danny the Manny. Danny the Manny, he's the fucking man. I think I called him Dylan earlier. Ah, no, you did. I oh, called well. him fucking everything but his name. <laughs> um, Nat Phillips scored an own goal, but I, I don't think we can really... It's harsh to criticise Nat Phillips for the own goal. He has to he has to attempt to get something on the ball. He has to try and stop the ball if he gets past him and go into the Kilmarnock player. Unfortunately for him, it's went into the net, but at least he tried to do something about it. Joe Hart could also have done something, but he just decided to stay in nets. And Celtic fans are already calling this guy the new Shane Duffy. I think that's incredibly harsh. I don't think he's played enough. I mean, Shane Duffy had a full season of fuck-ups. Yeah, this guy scored one on goal, and that's pretty much it. I mean, I think Shane Duffy honestly cost Celtic that season about 15 points. If you honestly think of it, every mistake at the back seemed to come for Shane Duffy. Oh, what a, what a Celtic team that was. Him and Laxalt, man. What a fucking team. And Barkas and Nets. The Dufter. Take me back. But uh, yeah, take me with this result. Matty Kennedy then. Even his finish, I didn't think it was that great. I mean, it was good play. Dylan, uh, Daniel Armstrong played him in. Good wee run. But the, the finish itself, I don't think it was fantastic. But Joe Hart couldn't do enough to keep it out. Uh, Matt O'Reilly go. What's your thoughts on that? You know what, it was, it, was an, it, was, it was a poacher's goal. Cal McGregor skins three guys, shoots, saves. I thought that Kelly had a Kelly goalie had a good game, but Matt O'Reilly's just on form this season. Does, he miss. does Celtic struggling and not being impressive in Europe, does that bring down his transfer value? Because I don't think... Does, cause I don't if think he Matt had O'Reilly, nine goals in the Champions League group stages, he'd be worth a lot more. No, but I don't think Matt O'Reilly can do much more than what he's doing right now. He's been great this season. He's probably been the standout player for Celtic. A lot of talk about Celtic strengthening. Yeah, he's he's, he's added. You know, he's added to his goal tally that he's not really done last year. So I think Matt O'Reilly's doing all he can do. But with Celtic struggling in the league and overall not putting in great performances and being poor in the Champions League, do you think that kind of dampens their chances of being able to demand a twenty-five million pound move for this guy? No, I think they'll get twenty-five million for him. You do? Oh, around twenty. Yes. Um, but I think Brendan Rodgers has got to take a lot of criticism, though. Not only for this, I think this se- I think Kyogo has been neutered this season. What happened to the, the energy machine? The, the Duracell bunny running around? He just doesn't. I know he didn't even start. 
but then he's not even he's not even starting. I, I did say here. I think it actually warrants a start. So Brendan listened to me and all missed about three open nets today. So oh no, oh no, oh no is right. It's it, Brendan Rodgers. He just he just doesn't Ange Postecoglou. It's as simple as that, really. So. Simple as that. But Celtic fans say, "Oh, me Oski, he's not Champions League quality." Name me players in this Celtic team that truly are Champions League quality. Me Oski scoring goals in Europe, just like Shankland did last season. It define Champions League quality, and then I will answer that question. Do you mean players that Why, I... are capable? No, do you mean play- see when you say Champions League quality? Do you mean players that are capable of like being in Champions League finals, or do you mean players that Celtic? That would are, are good enough to be in a Celtic Champions League side. Like what? What do you mean by Champions League quality? Well, it wasn't me that made the comment, but what I would take away for Champions League quality is someone that is proven at Champions League level and is good enough to compete at that level. So someone that's like you know probably got like twenty Champions League appearances or in that. Obviously, most of the Celtic. You could have twenty appearances and be pish. If, no, you, if you're in a, if you're in a team, you could be a dud, but your team always qualifies. Yeah. No, it's like when it's like Rangers signing Aaron Ramsey. Disaster. Joe, but, Hart, Joe, Hart's, he, got, Joe Hart's got about 20 Champions I mean, League appearances. He's done, just like Ramsey. They were both done. Point is, it, wh- who, what striker are Celtic going to get that's Champions League quality? Hit me with one that they can afford. I don't think they're getting better than Kyogo. Well, there you go. Like, I mean, Oski scored goals in Europe in here, I get it. Europa Conference League, big gulf in class between that and Champions League. But scoring goals in Europe is still go- scoring goals in Europe. I mean, so we can't really dispute it, but uh, we'll look at the league table in a wee bit because it's time to talk about your team. And uh, yeah, well, let's not two in a row. Let's just fucking not. Here we go, two in a row. <sighs> my yellow cards. Okay, now Shankland. I mean, the guy's been scoring for fun lately. He had a he had a slow start to the season, but then he got two goals against the old farm, and since then he's oh, been, been firing. He's been buying in in the goals. No problemo. I don't think he'll be at Hearts much longer. No. Especially with Hearts underperforming. I don't necessarily think he will leave in January, but I do think we could see him go in the summer. Well, Although wants, you never wants that Euro chance though. You never you never know with Rangers, like could he possibly I think he's still eligible to play for Rangers in the in the year. What if Rangers drop into Europa Conference League? He might. Can he not play then? Because Hearts played the qualifiers? No, we can. But it would be if Hearts were in the group stage. So, I mean I, I can see Shankland. I think he will leave. Put it this way, I don't think Shankland will be a Hearts player starting next season. No, and how much do you want for him? I want three, four million. I think that's realistic. I know someone did comment on my channel saying anything less than 10 and we will never sell, but I mean, we ain't going to get 10, are we? Let's... They offer 9.9. Like, I mean, come on. Who, who are we trying to kid here? But, uh, I'd take three million. Stephen A. Smith. Could... Both Bo- Bojan Miofsky and Shankland are too good to be fucking playing at these two clubs. Especially the way that they're performing. But uh, Naismith, Celtic Park on Saturday, is he going to lose three in a row? I think if he loses, he should be gone. I mean, he's lost to a shite Aberdeen side. Like, let's let's not beat around the bush here. And lost to a shite Rangers as well. Not once, but twice. And it's I don't even look competitive in these games. Those Rangers games, like, did Hearts ever look... I know the last one was only 1-0, like, but they never really looked like they were getting anything from it. No, apart from the... The, the other one in the league was pish, and then the cup final was pish. Why, well, yeah, it was played three times. Yeah, so... Rangers haven't had to be that good, like, to beat them. I know, I know, I know we, we say, oh, well, they almost won the league one, but... Almost ain't good enough. It ain't, uh, but David Martindale almost got a point, and then Martin Boyle went, no, nah, in the 28th minute. They were about to call it short in the 29th. <laughs> Not quite almost then, is it? No, uh, Martindale thought it was in dog years, this game, for some reason. Uh, well, Livingston have, I believe, not scored a goal in is it seven games now. I something like that. That's fucking worrying. That is worrying. It is worrying. Tony Macaroni's dead. I'm, I, I think Livingston are gone. Five points adrift. I think that... I mean, Ross County sacked their manager, came in, got a decent bounce. St. Johnson sacked their manager, got a decent bounce. I think Aberdeen are too good to be dragged into a relegation battle. Mullerwell... Could Mullerwell maybe fall down? Their form's pants at the moment. I'm not too sure, but um, I don't see at the moment with David Martindale staying in. Ch- I think he deserves the chance to take them down. I don't think he should be sacked, but I'm just not really seeing anything. I mean, Brian Rice came in and nothing has changed. Nothing has improved. I thought they might have got a wee bounce off Brian Rice. 
but he's fucking Brian Rice. But, but they're uh, onto rice. Yeah, they're onto rice. So. Three and a half thousand. Cold rice as well. Not acceptable. Fucking a three and it's, a half. It's fried rice that has just been sitting there. Crucial goal for Motherwell. I've seen a lot of people saying that Rangers should sign this guy. Mika Berif. Aye. Well, Instead of Shankland. I'm not seeing it. Like I think it's too early. He's got a goal contribution every 84 minutes. That's no bad. Like I just think it's too early to sign this guy. I mean, based on what, like seventeen games. I mean, yeah, but I guess he played eight or so. Uh, so, not for me. I think you need to do more than that, Tiana. Move to Rangers. I think it's a good draw for both of them. Probably more for Motherwell because they're not so. Late. I, I, it just it makes no fucking sense to me that the likes of Lewis Ferguson couldn't get a move to Rangers, but we're going to going to go and sign this guy. Come uh, on, man. Come on. But let's talk about it. Rangers against Dundee. Penalties. Ah, uh, there was a penalty. Was it a penalty? Of course it was a penalty. I don't think it was. What was more of a penalty, this or Alistair Johnston's one that they didn't even fucking bother their arse looking at? Well, see, I've only seen Alistair Johnston one once. And they didn't even slow it down. And the angle I seen was shite. Hey, well, it hits his elbow pretty much on the line and it blocks a goal. Here you've seen this. Two arms pulling him to the deck. Well, you need to ask Chris Boyd. You need to ask Chris Boyd? Seema wasn't even getting the boy. He wasn't even scoring. You mean he wasn't getting the ball, he fucking got the ball Aye, but anyway. he bounced off the top of his head, he wasn't good. Aye, because he wasn't able to jump properly, because this guy was pulling him to the ground. A penalty to Rangers, so we get the story. Come on, you know it was a penalty. I don't. Anyway, Cyril Desser scored, Seema grabs his ninth. Zaventes was sent off. Very but... disappointing for a Dundee perspective. You're, you're two goals down, you've got a full half against ten men. Why not fucking go for it? They did. Well, they didn't really create anything, did they? No, they did. Half Dundee were actually good. So, no, nah, well, what so did, watch the fucking well, what, what saves did Butland have to make? Well, you should have fucking seen the saves he was making in that first half. No, I'm about second half. Well, second half, I can't really recall many Butland saves, to be honest. Like but there wasn't none? No, but they did have a, quite a few chances that just really weren't on target. I just expect... Yeah, Rangers were worth the win, but Dundee could have had a few more goals. I just expected Dundee to make more of it, considering they had a man advantage. True. If you're ever going to have a chance to attack Rangers at Ibrox, then that would be it. Only 47,000 though at Ibrox. What's that all about? I wonder what happened there. I don't know what happened there, to be honest. A lot of home games coming up, but let's look at that league table because it's only minus five in Glasgow. And, uh, Rangers, it's going to be a bit warmer, isn't it? Uh, Rangers have added some thermals as well. The temperature's dropping. They put one more layer on, they're going to get it to two. Oh, the thermals Real are feel on. minus two. <laughs> the real feel minus two. Minus two, Celtic, where are you? They're coming. The Rangers are coming. Um, down the league, we have St Mirren in third place with 25 points, Hibernian with 24 points, Kilmarnock with 23 points, and uh, Hearts with zero points. Now, Kilmarnock's win today over Celtic means that they are the only other team outside the old firm that have a positive goal difference. It's embarrassing. That's shocking for me. I mean, we always hear about the big clubs in Scotland outside the old firm. I mean, Aberdeen, Hearts and Hibs, we always like to talk about how we're the biggest clubs outside of those two. Who's the third biggest club? You've got Aberdeen sitting on a minus fucking eight goal difference here. I mean, what's ah, that well, all? Most of that's against Celtic, though. I mean, it? what is that all about? You've got Hearts have scored what, 15 goals in 16. I mean, it's just, it's fucking shite. That, that's what it is. Like, come on. Future football for body. Um, nice Smith man, it really is, but uh, I'll tell you what, right? Assumption is the mother of all fuck ups because I've, I've kept saying the league's over, but is it a lie? It's, it's a lie, but it's not because Rangers are fucking playing amazingly great stuff, or those are both shite. No, uh, it's, it's Celtic are beginning to slip. No, but that's the difference. So if, if Rangers were actually good, I'd say Rangers win the league. Like, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I did say that both teams would struggle and no one would break the 90 point barrier. I'm sticking by that. Both teams might not break the 50 point barrier. 90 points will not be broken here. Will not be. I'm broken. But Rangers, the sad thing is, they're game in hand. They will not get on the level games with Celtic until the end of January. So. Let's break it down, though. It's 42 points after 17 games. Good. If, if, we're, if we're being realistic about this here. So it is. I don't think it's that. You've no, got a maximum good. of what? You have 51 points. 42 out of 51. Is that normally the points tally that would put you on course to winning the league? I would say so. It means you've, you've dropped points in four games and three were draws. All right, fair enough. Just asking. But, I, I, based off Celtic season, 
42 points, I think, flatters them. And I think Rangers, 37, flatters them out of 16. So if Rangers win their game in hand, it's 40 points after 17 games good. Is that title winning form? Mm, but see, uh, it's how you look at it. Or does it it's all, does it matters all, about who's fucking does, on top. Does it all depend on what the other team's doing? Ah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. I mean, Rangers have got two defeats at home. Yeah, you take them away and... Well, I'm, I don't deal in ifs and buts. I deal in absolutely. Some... Well, the only thing absolutely is Livingston are going down. It's not like fucking good for them. Uh, St. John's, I think, will be fine. Craig Levine, he ain't going to take them down. Mullerwell, I don't know. I think Mullerwell could be pants. Ross County, I have to wait and see till the new manager bounce wears off. Dundee will be fine. Uh, the top six, I think, will finish. The top six, I'm looking at it. I don't see, I don't see it changing. I think the top six will remain the top six. I mean, Aberdeen will obviously want to have something to say about it, but I mean, it, they've got they've got two games in hand over Kelly. Let's say they did win both of those games. I mean, it would put them just one point behind Kelly. So, by mean, by no means are Aberdeen they can't get top six. I'm just not sure they will. It's a sad state of affairs though when. St Mirren are closer to Livingston than they are to Celtic in their third. Well, Livingston have two games in hand as well, like. Oh, aye. Oh, aye. Livingston, two games in hand. Are they going to fucking win both? Well, they need to, don't they? Fucking no. need to. Well, they need to, but they're not going to, guys. But that is it. We've got the European preview show up on Tuesday. Three goals scored in, what, seven games at home for Livy? That's poor. That's averaging less than... That's less than 0. 0.5 goals per game. I know, but it's to be expected. They're mince. What do you mean it's to be expected? They're it's... fucking shite. This season's well overdue. No, I, I want think... them to go down. Fuck I think, I think they are. I think, I think, I think they are going Liquidation down. for Livy. Double L. On Davy Martindale. Anyway, guys, till next time. Double L for Brendan Rodgers today. A big fat one. Character.